get started. Good. So thank you so much, Regina. And hi and welcome, everyone. I'm Sofia Valin, and I work as a project manager for um, Ericsson Software Technology. I'm here today together with um, Ray Paik from CubeDev. Ray will introduce himself uh, later on during the session. Uh, we're very happy to be here at All Things Open. And our topic for today's session is open source documentation. This is a topic that both Ray and I are uh, big advocates for, and um, we know that documentation is often a very hot topic in our communities, but unfortunately not always with the best um, attention and uh, resources. Um, so the intention today is to share the experience that we have done and learned over the past years. Um, if you have any questions during the session, please add them to, to the chat or, or the Q&A and we will address them uh, throughout the session. A quick glance at the agenda. Uh, we will cover why documentation is important, look at some common challenges that we see, and I will then give you some insights what we have done for the Linux Foundation networking. Ray will also give um, his insights on working with open source documentation. We will then talk a bit about how to encourage doc contributions and then we will have a summary. Why is documentation important then? First of all, I um, we see that, or the fact is that open source is not only for developers and not all people can read code. So it gets kind of narrow if, if you don't provide good documentation. It, it is the entry point um, for all users and other interested. It is key for onboarding and project introduction and in the best world, we documentation would be treated in the same way um, or be a natural part of the software delivery. What are the common challenges um, that we see then? And um, it's often done by uh, a few volunteers. And even if you volunteer, you might not have too much experience with, uh, with writing technical documentation. It's often started um, in the last minute. It's treated separately from, uh, from the co. We see lack of uh, consistency and often poor quality. And then this vicious cycle basically just um, continuously repeats um, itself. What could we do then? Um, I will share now what we have done for the Linux Foundation uh, networking. And uh, a couple of years ago, a cross community working group was established for LFN with the goal of providing a common way for, for documentation handling. We saw um, the need for this since most of the projects were struggling with finding a sustainable way of working um, with documentation. Not all projects had a designated lead, which led to a community effort with often a, a pretty low um, priority. Um, we also saw an unnecessary overlap for maintaining guidelines. What did we achieve then? First of all, um, way more consistency across the projects within LFN. Uh, we provided clear and simple guidelines for how to work with documentation um, documentation contributions are treated in the same way as code contributions and this goes for metrics as well as um, recognitions. However, the projects do store local um, style guides and templates because this might differ a bit um, between the templates and as you can see here at the bottom of the page there is a link to to the common documentation and tool guide that we have provided to give you some more concrete examples on what we have done i'm going to use the 
open network automation platform project, the ONAP project. And how to work with documentation is something that I've been working um, together with David McBiton, who is the release manager for ONAP, among other projects within LFN. And we've been working together for many years. Um, Ray was also involved, if we go back to when we were working with, with OPNFV. And what we have established is that we, is that we have designated milestones for documentation for each release cycle. And this goes all the way from planning to having your repo structure in place with associated templates and reviews and all the way to, to sign off. We don't let projects get away with not completing their documentation. And I think that this one is also important to ensure that you have your technical committee and your PTLs really emphasizing the importance um, of documentation. We do schedule two documentation hackathons per release cycle. I'm going to talk about this a bit more in detail later on, but that's something that's been really successful and helpful as well. Um, we do provide templates um, with expected level of, of content. As I also mentioned earlier, um, even if people do volunteer um, with writing and, and supporting the documentation, um, there might not be too much experience. So this has also been very helpful to, to indicate somewhat of, of expected level of content and, and what certain documents should, should contain. Um, we also track all the documentation tasks in JIRA as we do with, with all um, the other work. And um, the last thing is that the documentation is stored in respective projects repo. And this is basically to, to enforce the responsibility and to really ensure that all projects um, see that their documentation is also part of, of their software and development. And with that, I think I'm going to leave the floor to Ray. Oh, thanks, Sophia. I think there was a comment. Uh, I was keeping track of uh, questions on, uh, yeah, I encourage people to continue making comments on, on the chat or the Q&A. Uh, I'll just read that off real quick. Uh, computer documentation has long been like government funding. Nobody wants to contribute to it, but everyone wants it to be there when, when they need it. Uh, Sophia, I don't know if you wanna like address that. I mean, I think it's well said, but uh, go ahead and uh, if you have any comments to add to that. But. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very valid comment and it's, mm -hmm. it's all true. It's, everybody talks about it, but as I said, we don't have too many resources um, doing it we have actually been very i would say all, almost blessed um getting support from technical writers in some of the projects that i've been involved in but that doesn't really take away the actual work of, of providing documentation because the people that are doing the software de development are also the people that that know stuff and and the information needs to be delivered um, either way. So it's it's a joint effort and it's tough. And yes, everybody talks about it. Right. Now, I, I mean, I think like, you know, some of the points that uh, Sophia, you alluded to, and, you know, I've, I've seen this as a part of the elephant community member uh, while you're leading uh, a lot of these documentation effort is, yeah, I mean, the trick is to, I mean, it's it's uh, tricky to do in open source community because consensus is very important, but you got to give people, like, I mean, there's got to be accountability uh, on things like, I mean, people all realize that documentation is important, but, uh, you know, like Sophia alluded to, like people kind of step back and when the work needs to be done, but there needs to be accountability and checks checks and balances to make sure that it's, it's done. But uh, Andy, it's like a well said, um, so yeah, I'll I, I guess I'll I'll introduce myself and and continue uh, on on the presentation. Uh, again, my name is Ray Paik, and I was at uh, Linux Foundation actually for several years. That's where I got to work with Sophia on on a number of networking projects at the LF. And uh, a couple of years ago, uh, in 2018, I actually made a, a job change uh, to join GitLab. So I moved from a foundation-based open source project to 
a companies based open source project and and uh, I just recently this is my second week in, in my new current role like cube dev. Uh, so I moved to another like a single uh, company based like an open source project uh, so that's sort of been my progression over the past. A uh, few years, I, I, I assume a lot of people uh, are very familiar with, with GitLab, so I don't think I'll get into that. But KubeDev, this is a relatively new community, um, and uh, I mean, basically helps you build analytics tools uh, to uh, for for your business application. So um, feel free to check them out. But uh, it's been an interesting progression as I move from like a, a foundation-based project that involves uh, several different companies to uh, to projects like GitLab and, and, and Cube. Um, so, I mean, one of the things that, uh, I mean, I had to obviously make, uh, go through some culture changes going to a single company-based project. And if you think about it for open core companies like GitLab, uh, your documentation is probably a lot more critical than traditional, uh, you know, collaborative open source projects because like the open core companies, they'll have a free version of your, of their product, uh, like community edition that's free, but they'll also have like a, you know, uh, premium or enterprise edition that customers need to pay for, uh, to, for the additional features or services. And, you know, if you're paying for a product support and documentation is even more critical. Uh, so I was actually curious as to see how documentations are done in, in projects like GitLab. And it's to, to my surprise, actually, some of the best practices that I've seen uh, at, at the Linux Foundation networking, a lot of it uh, tr translates directly into uh, to open core projects like GitLab. Uh, things like, you know, making sure that co uh, uh, your documentation is core part of your product or project. Uh, making sure that like a documentation is easy to find right next to the code. So, I mean, I have a couple of images here for GitLab and Cube. Uh, if you go to the top level directory of, of a respective project, you'll see a folder for documentation right there along with the code. Uh, so you don't have to hunt or search around for it. Uh, so it looks like your first class citizen because you, you know, where all the important information is stored, like, like code, it's, that's where the documentation is. Uh, so you want to make it easy to find uh, at, at the top level directory and don't hide it somewhere else. Uh, so it doesn't look like a first class citizen. Uh, the other thing I liked uh, at GitLab was, uh, it, I mean, this slide should be posted along with the recording. Uh, so if you click on this definition of done on the PDF slide, uh, you'll take it to a documentation page on you know, the checklist items of you know, things that you need to do to have your um, merge request merge and one of the requirement is documentation if you're uh, implementing a new feature or tweaking a existing feature that affects users you either need to update the documentation or create a new documentation to um, uh, for that new feature or 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 the feature change that, that you're proposing so if, if the documentation is not done that mr is not going to get merged for that feature change that you're trying to do uh, so it's similar to how uh, when Sophia talked about it, the LFN, like if you meet, don't meet that documentation milestone, it's not going to be part of the release. So that's how we, uh, so at GitLab, that's how you introduce discipline. And obviously, I mean, GitLab, we had a lot of community contributors. If they needed help with documentation uh, to complete their work, I mean, obviously we, you know, GitLab had technical writers that were willing to help uh, so that, but we want to make sure that you know that documentation piece is done so that the feature can be uh, can be merged. So that's sort of one way of introducing discipline and um, in making sure that documentation is done. Um, so the next we'll talk about, I, I think Sophia addressed this as well in Linux Foundation networking, the contribution process for documentation. Uh, and it, I think it was the first slide. I mean, a lot of people start making documentation contribution, even if you're very experienced from different open source projects, uh, to get up to speed in terms of, you know, how you know reviews are done, how how your pull requests or merge requests are triaged, and you know, get familiar with the review process. Um, so if if people get started on documentation, and a lot of people do, you want to make that process consistent with how code changes are done as an example, or even UX changes are done. Because uh, if people sort of get onboarded into community by making documentation updates or changes, 
you don't want them to have to relearn a uh, different process for like code changes, for example. So having a consistent process uh, between documentation and, and the rest of your project is, is pretty important. And I strongly recommend like the people uh, to do that unless there's a very good reason uh, to have separate processes. And uh, there was also a saying uh, at GitLab, everything starts with a merge request. And everything obviously includes like documentation, whether it's documentation changes or or code changes or et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we strongly encourage people to have a consistent process uh, for documentation versus like code. Uh, the other way to sort of make uh, documentation contribution easy, uh, you've probably seen this from uh, from a lot of the open source projects. Uh, so. On the left, this is sort of a, a screenshot from if you go scroll down to any of the docs pages at, at GitLab, like docs.gitlab.com, you'll see this uh, like a purplish box uh, with edit this page button. Uh, so if you're reading through a documentation, if you see a typo or if you see a documentation on a particular section that you think can be improved, just click on that link and it takes you directly to that file. Uh, so you don't have to hunt for it uh, in the repo. Uh, trying to figure out which which directory that you need to you know uh, navigate towards to find it. So you you hit that button, takes you to the folder, and all you need to do from that point on is basically click on the edit button and off you go. You're you're ready to make your changes. Uh, and GitLab even took it further, uh, not just like a you know project or product documentation, but even to their websites. Uh, so if you go to about.gitlab.com and if you go to the community page or even like the pricing page. And if you see something that you want to change there, like you, all you need to do is just scroll to the bottom and hit like edit this page link, and and you're ready to go. Uh, and Q.js uh, is the same. If you go to the docs page, actually the edit this page button is on the on the top right. Um, and I, I was when I first saw that, I because uh, I was so used to seeing this button at the bottom of the page, I was thinking that might be a better place to place it because not everybody will necessarily scroll all the way down to the web page uh, for the documentations. Um, so, uh, I mean, when I was actually starting to talk to the QJS community, um, there are a couple of things that I check uh, to to get familiar with the uh, with the community and the project. I mean, one was, um, I mean, you can tell I'm a, I'm a community manager. Like one of the things I checked was there was a community code of conduct uh, to make sure it's welcoming and um, et cetera, et cetera. And the other thing I did check was on documentation. Was it, you know, how long is it going to take me to find it? Or is it easy to uh, contribute to docs? So, I mean, those are some of the, like a early criteria that I was looking at when I was uh, talking to the community members. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you're, uh, starting a new project or if you already have a project i i just i think these are just simple tools to just make it easy to encourage contribution and have more people participating uh let's see the next one is on like your recognitions and sophia touched on this too uh you really don't want to uh, distinguish between contribution whether that's made to code or documentation i mean if you're going to recognize people i mean you know, I had a saying at, at GitLab, for me, MR is an MR is an MR. Like, I don't care what kind of, you know, improvement that you're making to the project or the product. Uh, so when you have like a dashboard for uh, for contributions, like, I mean, there's a dashboard uh, that you can, it's, it's a public dashboard that you can look at, contributors.gitlab.com. It's through looking at all merge requests, not just code or not just some subset of it. Uh, and we had some uh, fun, like a recognition program as well. I mean, one of them is if you get your first MR merge, uh, you can request this uh, camper mug with the hashtag my first MR merge. Um, and it didn't matter. I mean, you, you just fill out a Google form and, and we send them out. It didn't matter whether it was for a simple change in the docs or, or other more like uh, advanced feature changes that people were making. Uh, so we put everything on the equal footing. Uh, and the final piece there uh, is at GitLab, uh, in the GitLab community, we have a group of people called the core team. Uh, and then you've probably seen this uh, terminology used in other communities like uh, Ruby on Rails. And I mean, basically these are people that have made sustained contribution over a long period of time and they get nominated and get voted on. And basically they're the voice of the rest of the community. Uh, they're, you know, it's, it's uh, they've taken on a, you know, visible leadership role in the community. 
And uh, I mean, I won't read through the whole charter. Like one of the things that we made this change about about a year ago or a little over a year ago, because uh, I thought the the mission statement was focused too much on like a co-development. So we wanted to be inclusive of all the contributions and recognize all different sorts of contribution that community members can make. And we specifically spelled out like a documentation as I highlighted there. Um, so moving to the next topic, as uh, Sophia alluded to, we'll talk about uh, like events or 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 um, uh, other activities that you can do to encourage uh, contributions. And I'll share a couple of examples of uh, of events that we participated at uh, at GitLab or where we organize. Uh, I mean, even if you have a very good documentation uh, or web pages for onboarding or wiki pages. Uh, I mean, there's really no substitute for having a sort of a synchronous event uh, to get all the community members together. Uh, I mean, obviously this is, you know, this is all happening virtual now because of COVID-19, uh, but we've actually done this uh, before like a world start, started shutting down. We've had uh, events early in the year that was in person, uh, but we also done like a number of events virtually to encourage people to, you know, contribute to GitLab, like particularly on documentation. Um, and the one example, I mean, you can look at the YouTube recording. I have the, uh, I have the link right here. Uh, I mean, basically this was like a 45 minute session. Uh, and then uh, and, and the topic was basically contributing to GitLab, but all the issues that we use as an example were documentation related. So we wanted to make it very simple, uh, even for very beginners. Uh, so the first half of the uh, meetup, we sort of walked through the mechanics of here's your, how you find issues, here how you uh, file a merge request, and you know how the process of things getting reviewed. Um, and, and then we broke up the group in about uh, in I believe in two groups. So I mean, my colleague John and I we just like we were acted like merge request coaches and encouraged people to work on uh, simple typo issues uh, that we had uh, created uh, that you can click on a link here. Uh, and then in 15, 20 minutes, people were just submitting their first merge request. Um, so it was a pretty fun session. Um, and uh, uh, I mean, the benefit of uh, having a virtual session was that, uh, you know, I didn't know what the makeup was gonna be, I believe, you know, the meetup happened at like 9 a.m. Pacific time, but we had like contributors uh, or new contributors dialing in from all the way from Turkey. Um, so it was uh, good to have like a diverse group of people participating. Uh, so that's sort of a good way to, you know, get people introduced, not just to your project, but also, you know, let them know that, you know, we value documentation uh, improvements that input that people provide. Um, I mean, the other good example that I have, I'm this, we did this event, um, another virtual event about a month ago, and this was a group uh, with a group of people called The Last Mile. Uh, Lastmile.org is their website. So these are people that are working on people that are serving time or that are incarcerated and want to give them like a tools to get them trained for, for the job market uh, when they return to the society. So we had a group of people uh alums from the the last mile group and we sort of went through the similar exercise like walking them through here's how you make contribution to open source and here's an example of how you do it in GitLab. Uh, so it was one of the most like a meaningful like a sessions I, i've been a part of but we not only got like a first time contributors contributing but um i felt like uh, you know i was able to you know contribute to bettering the society is at least in the us um and the other thing I want to point out, I mean, this is something that at, at Cube, that this is something that we're thinking about organizing in the next few months is to, because one of the things we want to do is to improve our documentation as our uh, users and community members are growing. Uh, but, you know, hacking or working on or improving on documentation, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a best, uh, it's one of the you know better excuses to get like a users and and community members involved. I mean, it doesn't require a whole lot of uh, like a technical expertise for people to contribute. And then they're the, they're the ones that are actually using uh, your documentation on on day-to-day on -day basis. So, I mean, their insights very helpful. Uh, so, I mean, that's something that we're planning on doing uh, hopefully in the next few months. Um, uh, another event that I wanna talk about, I mean, you don't have to organize or, or, or uh, 
uh, be part of an event that's just solely focused on your community or your or your company. Uh, there are also like industry events that you can participate in, and one good one that that GitLab has been, has been participating in a few years is is the Write the Docs event. Um, I mean, they typically have three events a year. Uh, one in the U.S. I think it usually happens in Portland, Oregon. Uh, one in Europe, and then I think the third one happens in somewhere in Australia to cover the APAC region. Uh, but what they do is they typically have as their uh, day zero event, uh, they have a writing day. So you can, uh, I mean, so, so you see the picture there uh, on the website. Basically, what happens is that on Sundays, people get together on various round tables. So, you, so whether companies or open source projects. And so it's sort of like having an uh, office hour so people can kind of stop by and, and talk to employees at GitLab as an example. And they get introduced to the project. Uh, but also get a chance to sort of help contribute and, and hack on documentation. Um, so we, I mean, participated in, in, in one like last year when it was in person in Portland and this year, obviously everything moved to virtual. Uh, we weren't quite sure how it was gonna go. I mean, first of all, it's, it's Sunday uh, and people are not traveling to Portland, for example, to attend the conference. We weren't quite sure how many people will like willing like will will actively participate in in the writing day? But it was like a busy full day on Sunday. I mean, I was I was pretty uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, like you can see the stats there, we had a lot of first time contributors contributing to GitLab with over forty like a contributions. Uh, so it was definitely like a day well spent on a Sunday. Uh, I mean, I, I originally signed up for like a two hour window uh, to sort of help out, but I mean, I think I ended up staying for like three hours because it got so busy and it got very active. And the other thing I learned was that uh, even people that are, you know, like the technical writers, uh, a lot of them are actually interested in participating in various open source projects and looking for ways to get involved. Uh, so I thought this was a, a good way to sort of get, um, you know, get the word out on, on on the GitLab community and get new contributors involved. Uh, so I'll uh, stop there and turn things over to Sophia and she'll talk about some of the Linux Foundation networking events. Thank you so much, Ray. Um, so as I said earlier, um, we do have um, do two uh, documentation hackathons per release cycle. Um, needed to come up with something innovative, how to make docs um, a bit more fun and a bit more attractive and to call it a hackathon or a hack event and, and to have a full day dedicated to release related content has been really um, helpful and, and appreciated by the by the community and we perform reviews um, the documentation team is available for for questions and, and general documentation introduction um, and and for the ona project we have taken it as far as participation in in one of the events is actually part of the release requirements which is super helpful and um, this is always a virtual event uh, we try to cover as many time zones as as possible um, and we're trying to always set the date with respect to code freeze because we need to be realistic as as well and, and trying to push for for the work with documentation to start too early it's not going to work and and i've seen that if, if, if we start to push more for it after code freeze people have a whole nother mindset and they can be more focused on on um doing their um doing their documentation and then thank you ray and just some general comments, uh, submit the session wherever you can. I mean, there are multiple events out there and they have various tracks. So bring documentation. My experience is that hands-on sessions are more productive and they add uh, a lot of value. So sit down and, and do fun stuff, meet with others, projects and set up joint, joint sessions. I mean, it's it's all about collaboration and, and I think it's important to remind community members and that there are many different aspects of documentation. It's not only 
writing technical documentation. We have tools and we need to maintain the tool chain. Uh, there's automation. You can automate stuff as much as possible and just to get the word out there and, and to ensure that it gets the attention needed. And with that, I think we will have a quick summary here. Um, so summary and some recommendations. Ensure that documentation is a key part of your uh, product and project. Um, to have a consistent process between submitting, reviewing and merging code and documentation. And have a well documented and easy to follow process for contributing to documentation and that everybody in the community recognizes and understands the value um, of documentation is um, also something super important. And at the bottom here as well, you have um, a blog post uh, published by Ray and myself at opensource.com where you can read about, read a bit more about what we have discussed here today. Thanks, Sophia. Yeah, and then on the blog post, I mean, feel free to leave comments there. I mean, there are a couple of people uh, shortly after it was published uh, will welcome questions and feedback. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just to, I mean, one of the things that, uh, that Sophia, you mentioned like on events, I mean, I really like the fact that it's been obviously like a two, three years, but even a technical design summit, there was always a, like a session dedicated to docs, like, which yeah. tend to be like well attended. Uh, so I thought that was uh, pretty cool, and and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's still still happening with with design summits. Um, looks like I was looking at. Uh, go ahead, Sophia. Were you going to add? Yeah, anything? and I mean, yeah. and, and and it does, and I think that it's my experience is if you reach out to other communities or or other projects that will participate in a conference, it's easier to get a bigger crowd to talk about documentation rather than just having your own project so to reach out and collaborate with people and and really schedule sessions and and just force documentation to be as fun and cool as as all the code stuff it's it's been really helpful to to schedule sessions like that and even if people just come and listen in there will be a discussion because people do care about documentation it's just about taking the time to to also create and and write and work with it Cool. Thanks. It looked like there are a couple of questions. Uh, yeah. And uh, let's see, from Sean, this looks great for technical contributors and technical documentation, but do you have any metrics on how effective your changes are with non-technical contributors? Is this something being tracked? Uh, Sophia, do you want to take that one first? Not sure I fully understand. Go ahead if you... Yeah, yeah I'll, I, I guess, yeah, I mean, uh, I think I sort of understand the spirit of the question, but if I'm not addressing it uh, appropriately, Sean, I mean, please, please feel free to uh, uh, add further comments as well. I mean, on metrics, uh, I mean, at, at least at, at GitLab as an example, like we didn't like distinguish between whether if this was a documentation change, whether it was uh, like a more of a technical contribution or something that's more came something that came from a more casual contributor, like catching a typo, for example, or grammar error, or, you know, was it addressing, you know, this is technically incorrect, the command should be this and this and this, there's a syntax error. Um, so we didn't necessarily distinguish, like, you know, we had a label for it called documentation, if people were contributing like a documentation MR, uh, related MRs, but uh, we didn't like attract something like, you know, uh, one that are like a simple fixes versus like a more like a extensive content changes necessarily. Uh, but I mean, hopefully that uh, answers some of your question, but Sophia, I don't know if you want to add anything yeah. there. No, I mean, it, same goes for, for LF. I mean, we use Garrett for everything. So even if you submit the patch or push a patch for, for any um, like feature changes or documentation changes, you will still have your, your stats counted for as, as documentation commits. So we don't really distinguish that. And I mean, if I, I know, I don't remember what it's called, Ray, but I remember we had some um, community leading award and stuff like that. And that could be counted for when you do maybe 
supporting the conferences or doing stuff on the wiki and i mean there are many different ways of of tracking and uh, non-technical contributions as well right i mean in in terms of like how effective our changes have been like how do we notice like i guess you know sean indirectly the one way we would see is like overall is a contribution to documentation growing for example like because we made it easier uh, because we made things easier to find and because we encourage people to do it i mean we'll see like overall number of for example mrs merge with with their documentation label that's sort of indirectly how we uh we tracked it but we didn't necessarily di distinguish between like a simple fixes versus i mean something that was more technically involved uh, the next question is from regina uh are it, are audits conducted on a regular basis to ensure that most relevant documentation is available and if it's irrelevant are they archived i mean it's a very good question like sophia i don't know if uh if you want to uh oh, to. have an example from from the lfn but or do you want me to take it first or yeah yeah i mean so i mean at, at gitlab i mean we fortunately had a i mean i i forget what the number is now i mean they had probably about a dozen technical writers on staff uh and they routinely go through the process of sort of you know updating the documentation structure like you know is this is this the right way to structure the documentation or it's something that need to be archived and uh or or like removing like for example and and actually there were we got a lot of documentation uh, merge requests from community members saying you know this version is like incorrect because like whatever dependency we had like that version has been upgraded and changed uh so i mean community members do catch a lot of them but more structural changes i think uh what i've seen over the past like a few years at gitlab is that at least like a couple of times a year they go through so they look at the structure and see if it needs to be updated um uh, uh based on how example especially if if there are new product stages or or features that are being introduced uh so that's an example from uh from gitlab like so so sophia on like own app or other projects like uh once like for example, if the project is archived, I assume the documentation gets archived as well, right? Yes, yes, it does. Um, it's been archived. I, I would assume that it's somewhere as an artifact and you could probably access it if, if, if you want to. Uh, we do publish um, our releases and our documentation on, on reader docs. So you can go between um, several versions you can have like i think it's two released prior to the current one and then you have latest which shows what's on the master branch and um, so so we really don't have any um schedule audits it's a community effort to ensure that we update everything that needs to be updated before each release cool and yeah sean just followed up uh with this question the question was regarding uh people who know nothing about like Garrett pull requests or merge requests, uh, the code change process. Yeah, I mean, for, I mean, at least at GitLab, um, I mean, you know, maybe I'm biased, uh, the process of using the tool, I mean, whether I think between GitHub or GitLab, it's, it's pretty similar. The mechanics of sort of using the software, I mean, it just takes some training. I mean, maybe for, I mean, for most people, like a 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes of here's sort of the mechanics of, uh, here's how you find the file, uh, here's how you hit the edit button and then here's how you submit a merge request and you know you want to write like a certain commit messages uh etc cetera, etc cetera. um uh I, I don't think it's too difficult to do because at, at gitlab we even had like uh, children contributing uh like that were like eight to twelve years old uh and they were mostly doing uh simple typo fixes uh and obviously like a, the parents were coaches and sort of set them through uh you know walking through the process of here is how you make contributions using gitlab or like even github um so uh you know i think that's you know i mean obviously it's not a huge group of people at, at gitlab community that were contributing that were like less than 12 years old but uh, i think you know that you know I, I think with the proper amount of coaching and guidance i think a lot of people uh you know can figure out how to use how you how to, how to use uh even garrett github or, or gitlab to you know make your first contributions but i mean if if uh if um i mean i could be very biased and mistaken but 
Uh, that's sort of been my experience. Uh, and 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 Sophia, I, I mean, I, I I know like from my memory at the LFN, I mean, there are people who are marketing people that were making contributions to docs too, right? So yeah. they were not necessarily technical people. But. No, definitely not. And I mean, it ties back to the topic that we have here to have good onboarding documentation and allow anybody that wants to join and come contribute to be able to to understand and read up on and, and, and quickly understand how to make your first commit or, or um, doing a pull request and, and so on. And you start small and then you learn more, more and more. Cool. Other questions? We've got about five minutes left, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, as I said, the the uh, I think within a few days, along with the video, the slide should be posted, so you should be able to click on these links. Uh, but feel free to ping us, uh, you know, either via LinkedIn or like I, I guess Sophia, you're not on Twitter, but uh, happy to follow up with any of your questions or even uh, leave comments on the blog. Let's see, that it looks like we might. We have two more that came in. <laughs> yeah. All right, last minute uh, from. Also, another one from Sean, from a user standpoint, how do you feel multi-format delivery is for docs versus uh, web, HTML, PDF? Uh, how can or should OSS tools integrate with traditional advanced layout tools? Wow, that's a, that's a really deep one. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully this answers your question. Like, I think, I mean, particularly on, on collaborative projects like uh, Linux Foundation networking, I mean, there are lots of debates about like what kind of format it, it should be, should it be epub.txt? Uh, I mean, I think that involves a lot of, you know, discussions and I mean, you need to get to some sort of a consensus on what kind of format that you want to deliver it in. Uh, I mean, uh, I know like during the early stages of the project formation that was discussed um, in detail, but I mean, Sophia, I don't know if they, the, any of the tools have been updated since I left or like are there still discussions about uh, different tools and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, when we moved to read the docs, we do have HTML and PDF. And after we got the PDF, no one has really asked for um, more as far as I know. Um, but I remember that the PDF question was, um, was ongoing when I joined. Cool. And uh, next question from Andy, do you have a way to ensure that what is the most important need gets addressed first? Um, so Sophia, like, I, I think, I mean, I think Elephant is obviously very important, like different, like each of the sub projects need to have a uh, certain level of documentation, but uh, do you do a prioritization uh, on what needs to be done or yeah, I mean, it depends on the audience, I guess, uh, but to have some like technical overview is always super important, then you can elaborate and go deeper on that one, the more you advance, like within the project, but to have a technical overview, um, you need to have some kind of getting started with a, maybe an installation instruction, a configuration guide and so on. Um, but I would say to, to try to come up with a, a, a pretty like narrow structure and then you can elaborate on that otherwise you will end up having multiple documents that you need to maintain uh, because you were aiming very high um, in the beginning but you would want people to to get a good overview and technical understanding and then obviously be able to, to get started um, with a product or the project. Cool. Yeah, I, I, GitLab, I mean, this wasn't just for documentation, but any issues in general, we had a way of like a couple of different ways of highlighting important issues that we wanted to encourage community members to work on is, I mean, we had one label called community challenge. If you work on that issue with the with an MR, it gets merged, you, you get a, a nice uh, custom swag, I mean, from GitLab uh, as a thank you for working on that. and. We also had quarterly hackathons where we will list like these are the issues that we want to encourage people to work on. Uh, so that's sort of a fun way of like encourage like a you know putting a spotlight on some of the issues uh, that we want people to work on. And I mean it, like uh, at, at Cube, I mean I'm just getting started, but that's hopefully the way that we want to encourage people to sort of participate. Like when we have a docs focused event, 
uh, and get community members together. And then we want to highlight, you know, you know, we want to get feedback on this, or we want you to so, sort of help improve like these documentation areas. It's is is um, it's one of the things that we're we're thinking of doing. Uh, but you know, it's still early days. Like I, I haven't really necessarily gone through documentation, but that's um, yeah, I think there are a couple of different ways that you can sort of put a spotlight on important things that we want people to work on. And thank you, Sean and Andy. Like hopefully we answered your questions. It looks like we're out of time. Yeah, thank you so much, Sophia oh. and Ray. I really appreciate your contributions today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah, thank well, you. Thank appreciate you. you. All right, thanks.